Coffee Days and Tiro, welcome to another episode of Cinema Weekly. And we're on Zoom, perhaps fittingly, because our next topic that we're going to talk about is esports. And now we're joined with a Cinema based group known as Get Wrecked Esports. And so, um, gentlemen, thanks for joining us. We'll go ahead and start with introductions. Tell us uh, a little bit about yourselves and the organization. Hi, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for letting us uh, uh, reach out to people and uh, providing a platform for for esports here in the city. My name is Bo Ruben Martita. I am the <clears throat> manager of uh, Gabriel Esports, or uh, I, I basically uh, help help our our uh, esports uh, organization uh, with everything. Uh, but the one that's really spearheading uh, our our team right now is Sam. <clears throat> Sam, if you want to introduce yourself. He's our team uh, captain. Sure. Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Samuel Alvarez. I am the team captain of the current esports gaming team for Mobile Legends known as Get Wrecked. All right. And so, so tell us a little bit about what is esports? You know, someone who hasn't heard of it. Um, yeah, give us give us uh, your definition, and I'm also I'm also curious how many people are involved in this uh, in Saipan. So, uh, esports is mainly sports, but a, a lot of it deals with games, um, online games, uh, land games like uh, uh, couch couch uh, couch multiplayer games where you, you sit in the same room play play together, and it's also a, uh, online games were like what the last um the last tournament uh where Saipan and uh, CMI and Guam were were participating in. Uh so just recently we we last month we we were part we participated in one of the the second season of a uh, Marina Sea Sports League's tournament. It's a pro it was a pro tournament. Um it was hosted by Marinus Esports League, and the 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 uh, creator of the game of, of Mobile Legends, Moonton. Uh, they're very hands on when it comes to uh, community engagement, and they 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 really supported this kind of tournament, especially in trying to start up a, a community of a mobile Mobile Legends. Um, players there in the CNMA and in the whole Pacific. So we basically we're we're one of the teams that is participating in the in the in, in the last tournament. So there, this this is the second season, and in the CNMA there was I think four four teams, if I'm not mistaken. Sam, was it four teams? Yeah, I think about three or four teams were representing mm -hmm. Saipan at the time. Mm -hmm. And shout out to the to those teams. I think it was Hagu Real, Evil Geniuses, and what's the other one? Uh, I think just 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 those two were the ones that, that were participating in this last championship, the last uh this pro league. But there's other teams that are particip that participated in the semifinals and the qualifiers that 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 uh that that will get you into the season yeah there, there there's a lot there's a lot of players here at the state of my that i think will really uh that, that really has a how do you say this that we will really get us pushed into the the esports um uh the international esports you know uh right now guam is a represent there 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 is Guam has a national team that will be representing um that will be pressing there's a national team in Guam that will be representing themselves in Riyadh. <clears throat> there's a there's the uh, World Esports Cup, uh which a lot of uh, um the uh countries are participating in. Um and we we here in the CNMI want to participate in that and we are asking for for support from the community and support from the government or any sports governing 
uh, bodies to like create a infrastructure or uh, something that can where we can build off of and and uh, would that will lead us to participate in like international tournaments because we do have the players uh, uh, we it's like Sam he, Sam is like one of the best here in the state of my and in Guam. Uh, do you want to like describe our player base here in the state of my? And, and, and this is mostly mobile legends. This is like a mobile game that uh everybody can get into. It's it's you 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 play it on your phone, and of course there's other games that in the future that we we do want to get into, but this this is like a good um an easy uh. Case game that everybody can, you know, get into. But Tom, you want to go ahead? <clears throat> like regarding the player base, correct? Like, yes, yeah, yeah. And, just, and yeah, and just share your experience with the, uh, you know, the esports and why, and you know, why you guys want to see this grow in the scene of mine. Well, to be honest with you, a part of it has to do with, you know, Saipan not really being well known for its competitive nature and actually winning. <laughs> in some ways compared to the other countries in the CMI when it comes to this kind of sport. But uh, the experience overall was honestly quite mentally demanding, to be honest with you, because it was quite stressful getting the whole team together and finding a venue and all that. But at the same time, it really taught me a bunch of stuff regarding leadership. And um, yeah, it was like a... It was like a painful experience one way or the other, but at the same time, I felt like I really learned a lot about it. All right, thank you both. And my last question to you both is um, just, what what do you hope to see? Because this is really um, a huge industry internationally, um, not just esports, but we haven't even talked about even streaming, right? I mean, that's how a lot of things on YouTube got started. It was gamers streaming their uh you know their their games and so yeah what what is your ultimate hope i know um you mentioned uh the infrastructure for it but right now what does kind of the road look like ahead for you guys with your advocacy efforts um so let me just like say that like esports is like a big big platform like a, it's a big multi multi million dollar um machine like just this there's a tournament international tournament that Guam is participating in it's i think it's like three million dollars for like for the whole prize pool so imagine like that's a lot of money and for mobile legends for mobile legends um just last year first that's in streaming numbers basically like it had the second most viewership in the whole world aside from league of legends league of legends was the first one the, one of the highest one and the second one was second most mobile legends so just having that platform showing people i think it was like the peak streaming streaming uh viewership was like two million imagine having the cnmi you know take part in that and seeing uh having our flag presented in throughout to through two million people and and I know we have we have the players we have the people that are uh, that has the passion to 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 challenge other countries we just don't have the infrastructure and I, I think it's it's pretty simple to try to get to start the, that infrastructure you just need internet like look at us we we have three high schoolers that are part of our team yeah, Sam. <clears throat> Sam is working. I'm working. My my brother that helps too with managing is also working. Um. Uh, we we got uh some uh one player from that's in Rhoda right now that's also participating and he's also working. So all of us are, you know, like we can just focus on this, but we 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 make do and we, we they became championship, even though we all have busy schedules. It's just really getting the first step in and trying to like promote esports in the cinema so yeah i i think i think we just need that first step that 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 uh 
we really have the passion. We have the people that's interested in it and they're willing to invest. We just need uh the how the know how on how to 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 uh, get into like bigger tournaments. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Sam. Any closing words uh, along with that message? <clears throat> mm, I mean, not much actually, aside from the fact that. Hey, I know we're Saipanese. We're quite small, regardless. But hey, that didn't stop us, didn't it? All right, thank you. We 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 be it on Guam. Like, I'm just gonna say that. And I know. Can can I like do a few shout outs to people sure. that really helped out, and to the team that that won the championship. Uh, first of, first of all, like a big shout out to uh, Marana C Sports League. They're the one that's really pioneering esports here in the in Guam and in Sinimai and we're thankful for them too for starting this kind of uh, a league it really you know like is the first of its kind here in the Sinimai and Guam they're they're making steps they're part of a big tournament coming up in on December and hopefully we're, we were going to be cheering them on um I would like to thank the our Get Rick Esports uh, team players, Ryan Manglonia from Rhoda, uh, Eduardo Manahan Abu, the best marksman in, in the whole region, strongest marksman. Uh, Sam, especially Sam, he's a team leader. He, he, he was the one that was was picking up everybody for for the for the tournaments and the games. Who was every almost every night he will pick them up. I would also like to thank. Uh, <clears throat> Sean, Sean was what one of the what one of our key players. Who who else? Then? Uh, Naji. Uh, my my uh, Naji Patrick. He was actually the MVP of the whole the whole championship. He was one of the best players in the CNMI. And who else? Uh, my brother. He's also a big part of managing the team. And you know, uh, I call I I'm a I'm more of like the te technical side, but my brother is the one that really, you know, helps them. Like he's like really the coach of the team. So I would like to thank them and all the other teams that were, that took part in in the tournament here in the city Maya and Guam. Thank you. We uh, we're we're we we can't wait for the next season. All right. Thank oh, you. And, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Last one. I'm so sorry. If anyone's interested in joining or participating in any esports tournament when it comes to Mobile Legends, contact us. We, we have we have a we have a Facebook page. Just go to Get Rick Esports, Get Rick Esports, or a a Instagram page, uh, Get Rick Esports CNMI. Uh, we will also like to thank our sponsors for our jerseys and our and our uh, for, for our venue. Uh, Jotun Motors and Fat Sports CNMI for their older support. Thank you. All right. Thank you both for joining us, and we'll be right back right after this break. CNMI is in need of a service, a reliable service that is not going to shut down every now and again because they feel like it. Uh, so we're operating a, a setting up a commuter operation. It's going to take a little bit of time and we purely ask people to be patient with our setup. John and Paula Stewart hope to launch Micronesian Air Connection Services in December. Their roots in the NMI reach back to the start of their skydiving company in 1995. Since 2013, they've been running Micronesian air cargo services, filling a critical gap in cargo, mail, military work, and emergency response. In our endeavours to make this work for us and the community, uh, we're, setting, we're requesting a QC, uh, qualifying certificate, so that'll help us along the way. And, and hopefully we'll be able to bring things together 
in a short amount of time than you know than we think. It, but just be patient because we will bring that service to the CNMI and to Guam if uh, we're successful with our bid uh, for the QC. A public hearing about their application is scheduled for November 6 at 5 p.m. at Marianas High School. They plan to launch inter-island routes with two planes, a nine-seater and a seven-seater. And the question perhaps on everyone's minds, how much will a ticket cost? We don't know the full rates of what we can do just yet. We're waiting on uh, some of the landing fees and so forth so we can make more or less an educated um, estimate of where we will be in the very near future. But we will be competitive, put it that way. They're also trying to establish their Guam operations. We need facilities in Guam to make this happen. We have a bid in for a hangar at the moment and hopefully we're successful in that. Honestly, um, I just want to provide a service. I don't want anyone to shut down. We, uh, having a competitive edge is, is always uh, good. It's good for the community. It's not so good for the operators, but it's going to keep us honest. Tomas Manglonia, KUAM News, Saipan. I think the, the, the message across the region is about emergency response. Leaders from Asia and the Pacific convened in Manila this week for the 75th session of the World Health Organization Regional Committee for the Western Pacific. Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation CEO Dr. Esther Munya moderated a panel on climate resilient healthcare facilities. Director of Pacific Technical Support and WHO representative to the South Pacific, Dr. Mark Jacobs, explains. There's four key components of this climate resilient and so on facilities. Um, there's a component around health workforce, there's a component around uh, resilient water sanitation, hygiene and healthcare waste management, there's a component around sustainable energy, and there's a component around infrastructure and products and technologies that are beyond wash and beyond energy. Guam Director of the Department of Public Health and Social Services, Teresa Ariola, explained the urgent need for climate resilient facilities in U.S. territories. Most of the healthcare facilities in the territories are aging and health leaders worry of its availability and accessibility when disaster strikes. In the last decade alone, Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands experienced extremely powerful typhoons, putting the health system that is already struggling to meet the health needs of its people at risk of not being there at all. While the island territories have shown that they are resilient. More efforts need to be made to ensure that the health infrastructure is strong and prepared to withstand climate-related disasters and extreme weather events. We support and hope to accelerate our facilities to join others in the region as a climate resilient and environmentally sustainable healthcare facilities crash, crash, to ensure we are ready to serve our people no matter what the conditions our environment brings on. Tomas Manglonia, KUAM News. It's less about the wages and it's more about rehabilitation. Castro's bill seeks to allow the Sinai Department of Corrections to pay inmates for work while incarcerated. It would enable them to earn up to one dollar per hour. The intent of the bill is not to take, you know, use government resources to pay inmates. It's actually more of partnerships with companies. So, for example, um, let's say our license plates. Our license plates are imported and ordered from off island, but if we purchase the machine. Um, you know, that can be a partnership with DPS and corrections to, to have the inmates, instead of spending that money and importing license plates, you can now produce license plates on island. Castro noted that any wages earned would first go to any money owed, including for child support or court fees. He says it could also help DOC with the cost of room and board. Meanwhile, DOC Commissioner Anthony Torres said he supports the principles of the bill. Well, some may argue against the idea of paying inmates or supporting their work programs, it's essential to recognize that these, that these initiatives aren't just about giving handouts. They're about fostering accountability, responsibility, and resilience. Torres noted the success of the DOC's growing community outreach program and its benefits to the community as inmates help improve public infrastructure. 
Ultimately, he says if the bill becomes law, it will be another tool to provide public safety through rehabilitation. By investing in work programs today, we can lower crime rates and save taxpayer money in the long run. Transforming, transforming a justice system from a cycle of reincarceration to a system that nurtures hope and opportunity. Tomas Manglonia, KUAM News, Saipan. So we've started a consultation between the NMI Museum and the University of California, Riverside, to um, repatriate those ancestral remains back to the CNMI. Um, the great news is the consultation has been very successful and leading to um, a planned or scheduled repatriation in November. Leonard Leon is the executive director of the NMI Museum. He said the remains were unearthed from multiple historical burial sites in Saipan and Tinian. They were later sent to UCR for radiocarbon analysis by the University of Hawaii at Manoa's Department of Anthropology in 1981. The NMI Museum invites community members to join a small ceremony that will be held in California on November 16 to offer prayers and respect before the long journey home. They're expected to arrive in Saipan on November 19, where a welcoming ceremony will be held at the airport. It's important to return the remains because there needs to be a closure, a, a phase to heal, to re-enter these remains back into the earth, right? I think it's very... We owe it to the people of the CNMI and the Marianas to make sure their ancestors are treated with the utmost respect and honor. Amid the ongoing effort, the NMI Museum says it will continue to explore solutions that support reinterment goals, including requesting necessary land designations and funding for constructing reburial sites. Tomas Manglonia, KUAM News, Saipan. Five Hundred Sales co-founder and senior advisor to the Marianas Alliance of NGOs, Emma Perez, knows the impact a grant can have on a community. The administration for Native Americans has changed the face of the CNMI. They were the first major funder for Five Hundred Sales, and they have subsequently we've had two additional grants, and they've also funded Mango. So. Millions have come into the CNMI. Perez and Pedro Okamura, training specialist with the ANA Pacific Region TTA Center, co-taught a Saipan training about how to apply for grants, including ANA. Their grant funding has a threshold of $300,000 per budget year for a maximum of a three-year project. So that's just short of a million dollars. Okamura also held a training on Guam. ANA promotes self-sufficiency and cultural preservation by providing social and economic development opportunities through financial assistance, training, and technical assistance. Spend three days um, developing project proposals that folks can use um, to request funding for any funder. So not just the Administration for Native Americans, but for any federal funding, non-federal funding, we help them develop a solid project outline that they can turn into a funding proposal. Tomas Manglonia, KUAM News, Saipan. The NMI's digital landscape is expanding. This week, the NMI government inked an agreement with the Northern Marianas College, NM Tech Island Training Solutions, and the Department of Labor to launch the Governor's Broadband Boot Camp. It's a workforce development program to train local U.S. workers in fiber optic technology through 2025. It's a really quick boot camp to try and train up to 300 individuals. It comes amid the NMI's broadband expansion under the NMI Broadband Policy and Development Office. The CNMI is now in the implementation phase of the $80 million Broadband Equity Access and Deployment Program, also known as BEAD. Um, we were able to secure uh, close to a, a little more than $80 million for the BEAD program for the CNMI. That funding was uh, it is prioritized towards infrastructure development to connect every household, that universal coverage we were talking about. In the CNMI's case, uh, pretty much every broadband serviceable location will get that funding to get that end-to-end uh, -end fiber connection. That's our hope. Okay. And so within the next four years. And there's more. 
Before the end of the year, we hope to launch what's uh, called the subgrant um, phase of this project, and that'll open up a subgrant portal where we will then we've broken the the community up into 21 project areas. So we'll put out a um, an opportunity for qualified subgrantees to bid on those 21 areas, and um, put forth what amount of money would be needed from the bead funding to run underground end-to-end -end fiber connections to each of those households, those broadband serviceable locations within that project area. He hopes to bridge the digital divide. At, at this stage in life and the way the world is right now, access to the internet should be, a, it really should be a, a, a right, not just a privilege for a select few. Tomas Manglonia, KUAM News, Saipan.